Hello everyone and welcome to this video. So in this video I'm going to show you the best way to emulate Sega Saturn games on your PC via two different emulators but also and more importantly the proper files that you're going to be using for better emulation. So let's get this video started. To begin with first let's get our emulators. Firstly, make two folders on the desktop and label one Yabus and one Midnefin. For our Yabus emulator, we're not actually going to be using the Yabus emulator itself, but instead rather a fork, and to do that, we're going to go to this website here. We're going to be downloading the latest version of UO Yabus. It's basically like how the Dolphin emulator has experimental builds. This version of Yabus is essentially the same as the regular one, but it has more updates done to it as you can see, whereas the original Yabus hasn't really been touched in a very long time. Once we have this downloaded, put this in your new folder and then unzip it, and it should look a little something like this. Now at this point we're going to need to make a right click, make a folder, and label it BIOS. And as I've said before, I'm not really allowed to tell you where to get the BIOS from, but a quick Google search should help you. Once this is done and you have your BIOS in the BIOS folder, open your boost and select General, and then simply just tell it where the BIOS is that you're going to be using. Exit your boost, and now let's go on to the next step. Back in the main folder, right click, create a new folder, and label it either ROMs or Games, depending on your preferences as this will be where you put your ROMs or games. If we go back and open up your boost, it's essentially the exact same as the original, only with a few little extra options here and there. The emulator should auto-configure your controller, but if you want to, you can change the settings for it, and you can do that by going to here, and I recommend that you do that anyway, because then you can auto-configure the buttons or the analog or whatever else you feel you want to, to however you want it to be. If we move on to video settings, well, you don't really have many choices. Your video settings are OpenGL, and that's the only real choice you have, as the others don't really do anything aside from either Crash Games or the emulator itself. Below that are these settings, which you can change, and they can be a bit difficult with certain games, such as Guardian Heroes, where if you mess with these options, they do have a bad tendency to glitch the backgrounds. If you want to load a game, then we go to here and select load ISO. We then select the file and the game should open up. We're going to talk about file types later, so for now let's start out our second emulator. For this one, head on over to the RetroArch website which is here, download the latest version, put it into the other folder that you made and unzip it and you should end up with something that looks like this. Double click on Retroarch and open it up and it should look like this, which is quite similar to the PlayStation 3 interface. Firstly, select Download Core and head down to the Beetle Core. Beetle Core is Mednefin but it just works that much simpler if you do it this way by the RetroArch method. Once this is done, select Update Database. And once this is finished, exit RetroArch. At this point, you're going to need the BIOS, and again, I can't tell you where the BIOS is. You also can't use the same BIOS that you used for your boost as well, which is kind of difficult and quite annoying. Medafin is a difficult emulator to work and requires a specific BIOS. The best thing for you to do at this point is to go back to Google and search for Medafin or Saturn Beetle BIOS. Once you have found the correct BIOS, put them into the BIOS folder and open up RetroArch. Now for me, RetroArch automatically knew I had put this in. However, for you, you may need to tell RetroArch where the BIOS is. So when it comes to this stage, you may possibly have to do this yourself manually. The interface should have auto-configure your controller and video settings. However, if you do need to adjust anything, you can find them here. 
At this stage, to load a game, we're first going to need to load a core. This should just be Beetle, because you've only downloaded Beetle Saturn Core. Select that, and select Load Content. This will be where your games are located, and depending on what file types which you're using, which we'll go over later, will be. From here, we will then direct ourselves to the folder where you have the ROMs or games. We we'll double click on one of the files, and the game should open up automatically. And that's basically how you get your games to load in Mednafen on RetroArch via the Beetle Core. And it's at this point that we'll now go on to the last part, and that is the file system that you should be using. The problem with Sega Saturn games is that they don't seem to work in the same sense that the GameCube, the Wii, or the PS2 ISO files work, and that instead you tend to have quite a few different file formats. There are files such as bin and q files, however I would avoid these as they do have quite a lot of difficulties when trying to load from them. There are other type of files, but realistically I recommend that the best type of files that you use are CCDs. This is the best option to go for as they work much better and I find that they have less problems. You can use bin and q files, and you can use the other files, but I have found that using the CCD files just works a lot better for Sega Saturn Gaming. We then have to ask the question, why do I need two emulators to play Sega Saturn games? The reason is simple, one is better at some games than others. So depending on what game you are going to want to play, depends on what emulator you should be using. Some games work better on Medneff and via RetroArch, and some games work better on Yayo Yaboos. It's basically going to be a case of trial and error on which you find works best for you. But this is essentially why you do need two emulators. If it doesn't work for one, it's best to switch over and try and see if it works for the other. 